Okay, so this afternoon we're going to do more separation of variable and differenti differential equations. Um, I am on page three of your note. I would encourage you to follow along with me. Also note that um, we, I'm not going to do all the problems. I'm going to do some of them and then I encourage you to do the rest of them on your own. Um, so if you can finish page three and um, four tonight, that would be amazing. And we will practice tomorrow. Okay, so um, this is basically what we did yesterday. So I'm going to start with just this very easy problem. We're going to separate our variables like we did yesterday, all the y's to one side, all the x's to the other side. So the first thing we get is 3y squared, because I'm going to multiply both sides by 3y squared, dy is equal to x squared plus 2 dx. Okay? So now I'm going to integrate both sides, and the integral of 3y squared is y cubed, and that plus c will be added to the plus c here, and then I integrate this side, I get one third x cubed plus 2x plus c. Then I, I always want to solve for y, so y is equal to the cube root of one third x cubed plus 2x plus c. That's pretty much it. Okay, so let's go to the next problem. I want you to notice that this is, uh, is done as y prime, but that is the same as saying dy dx. So we, we can write this as x dy dx is equal to y. Now, when we're doing this, dx, when we're taking the integral, the dx and the dy must be in the numerator. So this is going to take a minute to sort of um, sort all of this out because I have a dx in the denominator. So if I multiply both sides by dx, I get x dy is equal to y dx. Well, we can see the problem with that is that I have an x and a y here and a y and an x. So I want all of my x's on one side, all of my y's on the other side. So I'm going to divide by y here and divide by x. So I end up with dy over y is equal to dx over x. And now we can integrate both sides. So you have to remember that dy and dx when we're doing this, always has to be in the numerator. So that's going to give me the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of x plus c. I want to solve for y, so I'm going to write this as e to the natural log of x plus c is equal to y. Now, I can rewrite this. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. I can rewrite this as the natural log of x multiplied times e to the c. e to the c is simply a constant. So I can write it as, we want to write it as big K, and e to the natural log of x, some of you discovered from your um, quiz, is simply x. So my answer is y equals k to the x. And actually that brings us to something that we're going to talk about later today. Okay? Looking at uh, this problem, let's um, separate our variables. Again, this is just dy dx, and I have this 3x here. Now notice I'm subtracting here. So I'm going to actually have to add 3e three to, three to the x to the other side. So I'm going to write this 4y dy dx is equal to, adding this to the other side gives me 3e to the x. Now, uh, taking my dx to the other side, I get 4y dy is equal to 3e to the x dx. And then I integrate. The integral of 4y dy is 2y squared, and that's going to equal to 3e to the x plus c. Solving for y, I get y squared is equal to 3e to the x plus c over 2, and then y is equal to plus or minus the square root, 3e to the x plus c, all over 2. 
Okie dokie. All right, let's do one where we have an initial condition. So when we have an initial condition, as soon as we solve, as soon as we integrate, we want to solve for C immediately. We don't want to do anything else. We want to solve for C immediately. So once again, I'm going to have to subtract um, from the other side. So I have um, the square root of y dy dx is equal to negative square root of x. Moving the dx to the other side, I get y. I'm going to rewrite this as y to the 1 half just because it's easier to integrate when I think of it that way. Negative x to the 1 half dx. And then I'm going to integrate both sides. And that gives me y to the 3, uh, y to the 3 half. And that's equal to negative x to the 3 half plus c. And we need to figure out what C is. So immediate, as soon as I integrate, I want to find C. So I'm going to use this initial condition when X is 1. Y is 4. So 4 to the 3 halves, remember we can take that 4 to the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 cubed is 8. And of course, um, this is just 1, negative 1, plus C. So C is equal to 9. So my answer is going to be Y to the 3 halves is equal to negative X to the 3 halves plus 9. And solving that, I get Y is equal to the negative X to the 3 halves plus 9 raised to the 2 thirds power. And I cannot simplify that. I know you want to, but you can't simplify that. Well, this one, this one looks like a ball of fun. So let's try this one. So again, we're going to put all of our y's on one side and all of our x's on one side. So I'm going to start here by adding this expression to the other side. So I get y, the square root of 1 minus x squared dy dx is equal to x, the square root of 1 minus y squared. Okay? So bring in everything to one side, so I need to bring this y over here and this x over here. So we're going to just sort of like we did before. So it's going to become y over the square root of 1 minus y squared dy, and that's going to equal to x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. The good thing about this is when I integrate, I'm going to get the same thing on both sides. So I integrate both sides, and I'm going to have to use a u substitution. So if I let u equal to 1 minus y squared, du is equal to negative 2y dy. And so I have negative 1 half du is equal to y dy. And I have y dy in my problem, so this becomes the integral of du negative 1 half over u to the 1 half. So this is negative 1 half. u to the negative 1 half, I add 1, becomes u to the 1 half. And then I have to divide by a half. So those halves cancel each other out, and I am left with negative u to the 1 half. Well, u was 1 minus y squared raised to the 1 half. Since these are basically the same thing, I'm going to get the same thing when I integrate this, except for it's going to be in terms of x. So it'll be negative 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half, and then also on this side I'll have a plus c. 
So I'm going to start immediately to find out what C is. I plug in 0 for X. I get negative 1 plus C. And if I plug in 1 for Y, I get 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. I get 0. So C is equal to 1. Okay, there's a lot of work for this problem. So I have negative 1 minus y squared raised to the 1 half power is equal to negative 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half power plus 1. I still have to solve for y. Okie dokie. So first thing I want to do is divide by the negative. So I get 1 minus y squared raised to the 1 half. When I divide by when I divide by this negative, this becomes positive, but this becomes negative because I have to divide the whole thing by negative one. Then I need to square both sides. So squaring both sides, I get this is really ugly. <laughs> I get one minus y squared is equal to when I I have to square all of this. So this becomes, I'm going to write this as the square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1 quantity squared. And then I have to subtract 1 from both sides. Divide by negative 1, and then, if that was not bad enough, now I have to square root all of this. is quite the ugly problem. I don't remember this problem being this ugly before, so if I made a mistake somewhere in here, please forgive me. Uh, that's the square root of that. The minus 1 is on the outside and the plus 1, but all... Okay, what did I do here? This is in parentheses. So all of this is squared. Oh, I messed up here. Sorry. This is a bookkeeping error. This is a really ugly problem. Let me do this again. So we're going to end up with, we're square rooting all of this. So y is equal to negative. the square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1 squared plus 1. And then we're taking the square root of all of that, and it's plus and minus. That is so completely ugly. And maybe I made a mistake in there somewhere, but if I did, we can talk about it tomorrow. Okay, I think that's going to be the last one I do today. Uh, but I think you get the basic, basic gist of this, and I would ask you to finish these for homework, and we'll go over them tomorrow in class. Um, there's another video on um, growth and decay, but I'll post that tonight, um, later tonight. I'll see you guys tomorrow.